Hi there, my name is Caitlin Bandy and this is my channel Bandy's Books. Today we are here with a reading vlog. I'm very excited about this reading vlog because I'm going to read a book I've been meaning to get to for a while. That is Piranesi by Susanna Clark. So this book has been relatively popular on Bookstagram, BookTok, and Booktube and I figured it was time for me to finally get to reading it. I have seen a lot of really positive book reviews about this. A lot of people really love it, said it's very beautiful and interesting and unique. And then I've seen some other reviews where people are just like, I didn't get it at all. And some of those reviews are by people that I really trust and have similar reading styles to. So who knows, I could love it, I could hate it, but I'm not gonna find out until I read it. And I was advised by a couple people that with this book, it's best to go into it blind. So I know very little about it. I basically know that there's a guy inside of a, like a labyrinth house and he's sort of just like wandering around the rooms of the house. As for anything else, I don't really know. I have no idea like if he's trying to escape the house, he's trying to find something within the house. I don't know anything really outside of that basic premise. So I'm looking forward to this. It's a relatively short read. I think it's 245 pages. Yeah, 245 pages. So I estimate that that'll probably take me maybe six hours to read. I should be able to finish this pretty quickly today. part one which is only like 15 pages I think 17 pages and it seems to be kind of an introduction to the story so we've met our main character he is called Piranesi by some but he doesn't acknowledge Piranesi as his name so we don't really know why he's called Piranesi yet just know that he is acknowledged as Piranesi at points in the story it's a really interesting start so far. Essentially, this is written in the style of someone's journal. So we're reading it day by day as Piranesi experiences it. And it's a little bit disjointed and confusing initially because it's completely different from the normal book format. I would say it's kind of almost got the vibe of like a, an epistolary story where it's like written in letters, except he's writing into a journal and the character is not sure if anyone's actually gonna read this journal or if he's just like writing out his thoughts to organize them. So it's kind of interesting. He gives us the layout of the house. So this house is far bigger than anything I imagined. I was thinking like a mansion size. This is like an expansive house. It's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of rooms, multiple floors, and there's all sorts of unique features within the house. I won't go into super big details because I'm not sure yet if it's spoilery or not, but suffice it to say that there is a lot going on within this house. It's also established in the beginning of the story that Piranesi is somewhere in his early to mid thirties and he doesn't necessarily remember all of his life. So more questions there. Still don't know how he's gotten into this house, if he was born there, if he was kidnapped and brought there, like what's going on. and. We've been introduced to the second character in the book, The Other, and we don't know anything about The Other yet. At this point in the story, he's only just been mentioned. There were other people in the house and it's explained what happened to them and they've been given names and stuff and identified. And we've also heard a little bit about some of like the statues and things around the house. So basically the first chapter of sorts, we've learned about the house, the layout of the house, kind of how Piranesi views it. We've learned about Piranesi himself, just the basics. And we've learned about potentially anyone else that could be living in the house. So now it's time to try to figure out how the house functions, why the hell Piranesi is stuck there, what's going on. I have so many questions at this point, honestly. 
I, I can't imagine having more questions after 17 pages than I do right now because there's just so much that you get thrown gets thrown at you in the first chapter. But so far it's really interesting. It's just kind of a little confusing and disorienting too. Now I'm gonna get up and get ready. I am taking it super easy today. Most of my day is honestly gonna be spent resting, but I do have a couple errands. I need to run to the bank. I need to pick up some groceries and a couple other things. And so I'm gonna get dressed, get out and do that while the day is still somewhat young, I think. Okay, so I am just getting home from my errands. I had a nice little lunch at this cute little Jewish deli across the street. Got myself a nice corned beef Reuben, and I am just getting back into my apartment, as you can see. So, we're gonna talk about the next section of the book. And I think things are starting to kind of come together. I do have to get dinner started. So while I prep dinner, I'm going to talk to you about the portion of the book that I've read thus far. I am going to be making some chicken soup because I've been feeling a little bit like, not under the weather exactly, but just a little bit like overly exhausted. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I worked a really crazy weekend and I think it's just kind of taking its toll on my body. So the best way to recover from that for me is like a really nice chicken soup. We had roasted chicken for dinner last night. So I have some carcasses, the bones of the chicken that I'm gonna simmer to make a nice stock. And then I'm gonna cut up some veggies. Those will go in with the chicken meat and everything. Obviously I'll pull the bones out at some point. And yeah, that'll be dinner for tonight. That'll be kind of a nice restorative thing. Lots of vitamins, some protein, some sodium, all the things that you need for recovery. Okay, so while all that's going on, let's talk about Piranesi. So I'm now about just a little under 90 pages into the story. I think I'm something at like 85, 86 pages, and I think I'm starting to kind of understand some parts of the story. There's still a lot to me that is like a really big mystery, but there are certain things that I feel are starting to become a little bit more clear. So first of all, it seems, oh, before I get into this, I am gonna give that spoiler disclaimer. I'm not sure that any of the stuff that I'm gonna say at this point is a major spoiler, but I do think we're starting to get into spoiler territory. So if you haven't read this book and you don't want to spoil it for yourself, you think you might read it down the road, this would be a good time to just click away from this video. I totally understand. And let me know down in the comments, let me know if you think I'm going to love this book or if I'm going to hate it, or like if you think you're going to love it, let me know how you feel about it so far based on the descriptions. So we have this guy, The Other, and The Other seems to be kind of subtly manipulative of Piranesi. He is, well, I guess maybe not subtle because I picked up on it, but at least to Piranesi, it's probably subtle. So he's kind of like interested in some sort of like his version of spirituality and Piranesi is not that into it. And he wants to forego this search for like the stars and this concept that the other is trying to form basically. And I feel like it's kind of interesting because like Piranesi is like, no, I don't want to do this anymore. And then the other is like, oh no, it's happening again. You're forgetting. And then Piranesi is like, what? What do you mean? And he's like, oh, this happens every 18 months. You forget everything and I have to remind you. And honestly, it just seemed a little bit like gaslighting to me. I don't know how to explain it. Like the fact that Piranesi remembers everything step by step, like how to get from one place to another within this building but somehow he's forgetting time and like losing track of things and not remembering people he's met. I don't know, it's just kinda, something about it just didn't quite sit right with me. It just seemed like a gaslighting ex almost, if that makes sense. 
And um, so I just feel like there's something that's going on that the other is not being quite honest about. I don't know what yet. I don't know if he's the one that's keeping Piranesi in the confinement inside the house or if like he's actually out there trying to protect Piranesi or if maybe he doesn't know what's going on and he's just like come to his own hypothesis and trying to save Piranesi from getting hurt. I have no idea. But it just, I don't know, something just doesn't sit right. I feel like he knows more than he's letting on. Like I feel like he's manipulating the scenario that Piranesi is in somehow. So there's that. There's also a part where Piranesi is exploring this chamber where like basically the other kind of instructs him to go up there because he mentions this room with this like unusual feeling that it you could see the stars from it and it's like different than all the other rooms and halls. And the other is like, well, how come you didn't tell me about this room? Where is it? You have to go back. And Piranesi tells him like, hey dude, it's kind of dangerous. It's like, you know, through a bunch of ruins and stuff. And the guy's like insistent he goes. And then this was kind of what made me feel like the other is the guy manipulating the scenario. So at that point, Piranesi is like, well, I don't want to do it because I don't have shoes. I'm walking around barefoot in like this wreck of a house where like, you know, there's debris and rubble and other sketchy stuff and this guy's like oh why didn't you just tell me I'll get you some shoes and then like magically a couple days later he comes back with some shoes for Piranesi so like where's the shoe where the shoes coming from like does he have some magical elves that he just like snaps his fingers and suddenly some shoes appear or is he like leaving the house and going to a store I don't know it's just weird and then there's like this whole list that Pir Piranesi gives of all the stuff that the other has given to him over time and it just seems strange to me like it's just, you know, like I said, I, there's something that I'm not getting yet. I'm sure I'm going to get there soon, but there's something missing still. And then while Piranesi is out on this exploration, he actually finds some torn up notes. And these torn up notes, he can only find like 47 fragments of these notes. And he's like piecing them together, trying to figure out who wrote them and what they're about. And he can't quite understand them. He sees the word Minotaur and he finds the other fragments that are missing but they're in a bird's nest and the seagulls like are attacking him because they think he's trying to steal their young when he really just wants their paper that they use to make the nest so he resolves that he's going to go back in like the spring or the fall i forget what time exactly he's going back at some point when the birds have moved on so that he can check out what the rest of those paper fragments say stock going for the soup so we're just gonna put some bones, the chicken, all the chicken bones, uh, a little bit of the skin, any like cartilage, all that stuff breaks down and makes a really flavorful stock. I'm gonna add a couple pieces of bay leaf, give it a little bit of flavor, a little bit of salt and pepper. I'm not gonna go heavy on the salt right now just cause you know, it needs time to cook. And we're gonna give it a little bit of time too. Sorry, I know this isn't exactly a cooking video, like, I know that you guys are just here for the book reading vlog, but cooking is like an integral part of my life. So we're gonna pop some of that in. All right, so anyways, continuing on with this whole thing with Piranesi. So we've established that there's something going on with the other that we don't know about. And I've just gotten to part three in the book and all of a sudden the other starts mentioning 16. And Piranesi's like, oh my gosh, there's a 16th person you never told me. And the other kind of has like an oh shit moment where I think he realizes that he wasn't supposed to tell Piranesi about that. That's the impression that I had. Maybe I'm reading the room wrong here on this one, but I have the distinct impression that he didn't want Piranesi to know because as soon as Piranesi starts asking him questions, he starts backtracking on the story. Like, yeah, there's this other person, but they're somewhere far away and you can't go looking for them. And if you see them, you have to hide from them because they're my enemy. And because they're my enemy, they're your enemy. And then Piranesi is like, but if they're really far away, then how did you find them? And the other is like, what do you mean? And Piranesi is like, I thought you said you hadn't been anywhere far inside the house. And then all of a sudden, like, the other just shifts subject and like completely does a fake on them and and just completely gives them a non-answer 
And so to me, that like was the key right there. Ooh, look, look at this carrot. That's a fun carrot. So anyways, the other kind of basically dodges the question, doesn't give him an answer exactly, and just makes him promise that if he comes across this other person, number 16, that he will not go and communicate with them. So again, this kind of plays into that gaslighting vibe for me. I feel like if everything was on the up and up, then this guy would probably have no reason for a pair of to not talk to number 16. I feel like the other is the puppet master and he's controlling all of the people within this house and that's why he doesn't want Piranesi to go speak to this other person. Um, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe if you've already read this, you're like sitting here laughing at me as I like theorize what's going on, but that's just the vibe I have so far. We'll see if it comes to pass. So going forward, I think that there's some kernels of information that Piranesi has picked up on in the last few pages of the story where I don't know that he's going to let him go. He's already resolved to go back and read through all of his journals and see if he is indeed missing time because the other tells him that the reason that, you know, he's like frustrated with Piranesi's insistence that they stop this like pursuit of research or knowledge or whatever is that they've already had this conversation before that every 18 months Piranesi, you know, comes back and is like, oh no, we can't do this. So Piranesi like is so certain that he's not losing time that he decides he's basically going to go read through all these journals that he's ever written. And I feel like he's going to start putting two and two together and being like, this other guy is kind of creepy. He's not actually my friend. And it's kind of sad because there's this one point where, like I mentioned, the other gives Piranesi some shoes. And I feel like, so Piranesi's response is like, the other is like, how do you like the shoes? And Piranesi is like, yeah, they're great shoes. But better is the friendship that they symbolize. You know, you're my friend and, you know, you do these nice things for me. And the other's like, kind of like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Basically, he just shrugs it off. And I just, I don't know, like, Piranesi just seems so sweet and innocent. And then this other guy seems like kind of a jerk. So we'll see. We'll see if my intuition is correct. Anyways, I'm going to sit here and finish chopping up my veggies. Good morning, YouTube. I am just starting my day. It's Tuesday morning, and I meant to finish the book yesterday, but unfortunately I had a pretty bad flare-up of pain and had to just kind of count myself out for the night. But I did read a little bit more. I just didn't feel like recording because I was hurting. So I'm about three-quarters of the way through Piranesi now, and... I think some of my suspicions were correct. I think that it seems like the other is not a honest guy. I think he's hiding a lot from Piranesi. I have the suspicion that he is basically the reason that Piranesi is in this maze and wandering around aimlessly. Oof, don't mind my hair, I'm letting it air dry. So we meet a new character. Uh, yesterday in the story sorry yesterday in the story we met a new character in the third part and this character is not 16 but is someone that knows both Piranesi from apparently a past life or a past part of his life and knows the other he calls the other Ketterly and it sounds like Ketterly is some sort of an academic that basically he's studying some source of knowledge or power of some sort and he is somehow studying that through Piranesi. So I'm on my way to my work meeting. On Tuesday mornings I have a work meeting with my boss where we discuss what we're doing for the week, how things are going, all that kind of stuff. And so we usually just meet at like a local coffee shop or something like that. I think I've mentioned that before in these videos so i'm headed over there right now and we're gonna get a plan going for the week and then hopefully i'll be able to finish up the last little section of the book after that i'm pretty close to the end so i think that's reasonable so anyways we discover that let me turn down the ac so you can hear me 
we've discovered that the other is actually called Ketterly and Ketterly is doing some sort of academic research. He's potentially got some shady things going on, I guess. I don't even know what to call them, but it seems that whoever his mentor was also had some shady things going on and that perhaps uh, Ketterly was inspired by these shady machinations. So it seems like Piranesi is gonna finally find out who he is, who he was before the house that he's stuck in. And like I said, I'm pretty sure that Ketterly is the reason for him being there. I had that inkling, but now with the appearance of this other person, I'm pretty certain that that's the case. And then the most recent part that I read, I just, we just, just met 16. Like I just got to that point. So I don't actually even know who 16 is yet or like what's going on with that. We just got introduced to him. So I'm about to find out who 16 is and what they have to do with the rest of the story. Um, it's a pretty good read so far. A little, again, a little confusing and disjointed at points, but interesting nonetheless. I don't know that I'm like, rave review in love with it but I also don't hate it I think I'm undecided and probably the ending is going to be what makes or breaks it for me so we'll check in later after I've had a chance to finish the story I'm just getting home from my meeting with my boss and some time reading at the coffee shop. I have made pretty good progress on the book and I'm getting very close to the end. So we found out all sorts of interesting things in regards to Piranesi and what is going on with him. I'm gonna make myself a quick pot of tea. My tummy is a little bit upset. I'm still kind of mid flare. And so I would like to go ahead and make myself some peppermint tea and I'm gonna snuggle up with a blanket and knock out these last 70 pages or so. section five I felt like I just wanted to kind of read through the whole thing because the sections were a lot shorter so there was one section that was like literally kind of a chapter size and I just felt like I'd be repeating myself too much if I kept stopping and I was also kind of really into the mystery of Piranesi and how he got into this labyrinth in the house so we do find out that Ketterly kidnapped Piranesi. So Piranesi is Matthew Rose Sorensen. He was writing a book on Arne Sales. That's the other scientist's name that I couldn't remember in the last section. 
So Arne Sales comes up with this concept of there being these other worlds and that if we basically take our consciousness back to when we were children and we readily believe in everything that we'll be able to access the paths to these other worlds. So Arne Sales convinces a whole group of scientists and scientific minded people that this is reality, I'm sure by performing this ceremony and bringing them to this actual world, because why would you believe this theory of other worlds without some sort of conclusive proof? So Ketterly becomes a devotee to Arne Sales's theory of these multiple worlds. And when Arne Sales is eventually carted off to jail for kidnapping, Ketterly sort of jacks his theory and jacks his research. It seems that Ketterly was locking people within this house. There's 13 or 14 dead bodies in the house. I think 13. Yeah, 13 because Piranesi counts himself plus Ketterly as the other two, which is how we get to 16. So there's 13 dead bodies in the house. And so we don't know who those 13 bodies are, but the assumption is that it's between Arne Sales and Ketterly having locked these people in the house to study what happens to them. We know that the result of being locked in this house is a loss of memory, basically like you start to forget who you're from, who you are, where you're from, what happened to you, and you assume this identity within this house. And it could be also partially due to like this long-term isolation you're trapped in this labyrinth of, of rooms with nobody to talk to, nobody to console you. I mean, it gets to the point in the story where Pyrenees is literally talking to the birds and the statues. But it's interesting because as Pyrenees learns that he's Matthew Rose Sorensen, he starts to acknowledge that yes, in one life he was that person, but he's not currently that person anymore. So he acknowledges that he looks like Matthew Rose Sorensen, but he explains it as Matthew Rose Sorensen is inside of him, but asleep. And to me, that almost seemed like a parallel for like somebody that's suffering from mental illness. Like, I don't know. I don't know if this was supposed to be an allegory for mental illness or if this is supposed to be taken literally. I'm not really necessarily intellectual enough to, to debate that one way or the other, but it just is interesting the way that Piranesi takes everything in stride. He comes across this whole revelation that he's essentially kidnapped, that he's been locked in this this huge house for how many years, that his family's suffering on the outside, having no idea where he's at, had no idea if that he's alive or anything. And he kind of just takes it all in stride. And instead of like suffering with that knowledge, he just goes, okay, I am that person, but that person is a part of me that's, that's sleeping. That person's no longer awake. And eventually when he decides to go back to the real world, it's really interesting because he doesn't go back for himself. I don't feel like he went back because he wanted to see his family or because he missed his old life. He goes back for the other people. He goes back because the family is suffering because he knows his mother, father, and sisters and friends miss him and have no resolution on what happened to him. And it's presented in this like very selfless way. He's essentially giving up this place that he loves for people he doesn't really even know. I mean, obviously you can argue that he does know them because they're his family, but he, as Piranesi, doesn't know them anymore. He has no recollections of them really, and he's just doing it because he knows it'll make them feel better. And I really thought that the conclusion, the last couple pages, was really interesting. So he integrates himself back into the real world, and, you know, seeing a psychiatrist, he's, you know, talked to the police about his disappearance, people have questioned him. And eventually he goes to find Ritter, the other guy who had been trapped by Arne Sauls. And he takes Ritter back to the labyrinth and allows him to visit. And Ritter is overcome with emotion. He cries, he begs Piranesi to leave him there. And so it's clear that Ritter had this kind of miraculous experience that Piranesi did as well. He viewed the house as a magical, kind, benevolent place, and back in the real world with all the noise and chaos and bad things happening, it seems like he, he doesn't love it. He's maybe po possibly overwhelmed, and it's even like shown through the job that he takes on. He's caretaking this old like museum with lots of statues and stuff, and he explains at one point that that's because it reminds him of the labyrinth. So I thought that was very interesting, and I thought that it was interesting that Piranesi keeps going back to visit as well. Like, clearly he's torn between these two worlds. And I think it seems to me that he only stays out of that obligation towards the family. 
And I love that the conclusion is that Piranesi tells Ritter, you know, basically, I'll bring you as often as you want to visit. I can't leave you here because you're not capable of feeding yourself. But if I ever come back permanently, I'll make sure to bring you with me. And I thought that was really sweet in a weird way. Like, it's kind of almost like a discussion of Stockholm Syndrome, except Stockholm Syndrome with a place instead of a person. Like this labyrinth was sort of a jail or a prison, but Piranesi's relationship with it wasn't that it was a prison. It was a much kinder place. Like he had this, like I said, it's almost a, um, to him it's almost like the house has a personality that it's almost sentient. And he has this relation, this hu very human relationship with it. I thought that was very unique and interesting. I'm sure that there's stuff that I've missed that smarter people will pick up on and be able to discuss in much greater detail. I'm not a literature student. I'm not working on a master's in, in literature or anything like that. So I'm sure there's themes that I'm missing in this book. But I thought it was actually a really unique story. It's very quiet. It's definitely a slow burn. This is, I guess I would classify as like contemporary fantasy. It's not fantasy like you would think of it's not Lord of the Rings it's not you know the Hunger Games it's not any other fantasy series that you could think of where there's magic or at least obvious straightforward magic there's no waving of wands casting of spells there's no government dystopia it's just kind of interesting the magical structure solely exists within this house and this other realm and it's very quiet like the understanding of this realm it's it's subtle like you kind of slip into it initially i went into it thinking that this was going to be some sort of a greek mythology retell and it kind of kind of echoes that a little bit but then goes in a different direction and i i really liked that element i thought that you know even though it was a short book i felt like i had to be kind of patient because initially it does take a while to kind of understand what's going on you're very confused a lot of things aren't making sense and then you kind of come to make sense of everything as Piranesi is making sense of it himself. So I thought that was a unique element as well. I do really like books where you have a character that's experiencing amnesia or is naive in some way and they learn as the reader is learning. That's always a cool feeling to like literally feel like you could be the character within the book. So I enjoyed that element. I don't know that this is like my going to be my favorite book ever. I know that a lot of people have ranted about how this is like the most gorgeous thing they've ever read and it's the best book of their life and life-changing. I'm not sure that I feel quite that strongly about it. I don't dislike it either. I think for me this is certainly very well written and a very unique exploration of our relationship with the things around us. I could see how people might not like it. If you're used to a fantasy with more action, this could probably feel a little bit slow and tedious. but. I think that that's kind of the point. It's supposed to be like a meditative experience. And so I did enjoy that part of it. I think for me, I would overall give this book a four star. I would recommend it for somebody that likes quiet, introspective books without a lot of action. Somebody that likes a character who's maybe a bit naive. So that is my reading vlog for Piranesi. If you've made it to the end, hopefully you've read this book so that these weren't all spoilers for you or you weren't planning on reading it so the spoilers don't matter. Let me know in the comments below how you felt about this book if you've read it. I want to hear your thoughts. I find this to be such an interesting book and like I said I find the opinions very mixed on it so I'm curious to see where you stand. If you like the video hit the thumbs up button and if you're not already subscribed to this channel you know what to do hit subscribe. I post regular bookish content throughout the week. I'm pretty regular about it. I'm doing pretty good, you know, posting. So I'd love to see you in another video. Again, I'm Caitlin Bandy. This is my channel, Bandy's Books. Thanks so much for joining. Bye.